They won't let you see. Evidence thrown away. It's an election that was for sale. The media, eager to crown their guy president. Failure after failure after failure. And they won't let us know the truth. It's a recipe for a brazen theft. We need to stop this now. Contact your legislators. Demand they protect our democracy. Take action. Go to thehonestvote.com. Warning, parental advisory is recommended. Oh, f just listen. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a lyrical spit update for Wednesday afternoon, December 23rd, 2020. Feel free to call the Lyrical Spit 24 hour hotline at 360 200 8779. And you may just hear your voice message right here on the show. Yes, I will have a music episode dropping before the new year titled Volume 23, No Politics, Rock, Punk, and Stuff. If you want to get in the mood for some holiday spirit, listen to Lyrical Spit Volume 21 for some 2020 Christmas holiday songs that is not for snowflakes. I do appreciate all the great feedback, and people are saying the show was very enjoyable. There is a presidential coup going on right here in the United States, right under our noses. We need to wake up, America. This is a clip from Stinchfield on Newsmax with founder and former CEO of Overstock.com, Patrick Byrne. Here's the clip. I have watched over the past four years. Leaks continue to flow from inside the White House. That is simply unacceptable. I have always said the leakers must be rooted out. The meeting is said to have lasted four and a half hours. Voices were raised. Someone in the White House told the New York Times about the meeting. Why anyone close to the president would even talk to the New York Times is beyond me. Unless, of course, your goal is to hurt the president. Just look at this headline. The Times concocts, Trump weighed naming election conspiracy theorist as special counsel. Of course, they're talking about Sidney Powell there. Whoever leaked this story needs to be fired immediately and possibly even prosecuted. The Times went on to print that the president was actually considering some type of martial law to rerun the election. But others inside the room now insist that conversation never happened. So if that's true, it means a so-called trusted presidential advisor is lying and leaking to the New York Times. Leaks are bad enough, but fabricated leaks are designed to inflict the most damage possible, which makes me angry that there are still people inside the White House this close to the president after four years that actually want to hurt him. Well, one man who says he was there for the meeting he even posted pictures of himself at the White House to stop any critics from trying to claim that he was lying about it. Is the founder and former CEO of Overstock.com, Patrick Byrne, a man who insists he's uncovered overwhelming evidence that the election was rigged. Patrick Byrne, welcome to the program. Mr. Sinchfield, glad. Uh, it's an honor to be on. Thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, it's always an honor to have you here. So I want to get right to the heart of this. Why don't you Sorry. tell me what went down in the meeting? Because I was struck by your comment that the president is being betrayed from within. Tell me about that. Yes, sir. First, I would, would, I would never, ever have posted pictures of myself in the White House. But given that one of the three gentlemen there, I think it's the general counsel, Pat Cipollone, leaked to the New York Times the next day and leaked lies, I felt an obligation to screw the rules. And I put, I'm going to tell the truth. And I put pictures up to show I was there. For the leakers, the general counsel, Pat Cipollone, he leaks, I believe, habitually to Maggie Haberman in the New York Times. Uh, whoever leaked is lying through their teeth. I was there for the entire four and a half hour meeting. Uh, the, first of all, as a CEO, as a guy who built a number of companies, including one called Overstock, I, I won the National Entrepreneur of the Year Award. I've worked for Mr. Buffett. I've run groups of companies for him. The level of patience and generosity that President Trump showed is mind boggling to me. I would have fired those guys in a New York minute. They were caught lying repeatedly in front of me. I told the president in front of them 
I can bring three young people from within your administration in this building right now in 30 minutes who will tell you that they are getting signals from their supervisors, just get the president to can concede, just let's get him to transition. And I'm not going to tell you much about what Mr. Trump had to say about things, but he was very annoyed about that. And he asked who. And I said, one name I keep hearing is Pat Cipollone, He's your general counsel. The guy was sitting right behind me, didn't even really deny it. Uh, artful dot lodger stuff. I said he is lying through his teeth. Uh, they are absolutely betraying him from within, his legal state staff. Mark Meadows, I like. He's a nice man. I think he's a bit of a... I don't think he's got the courage that that, man, that position needs. Uh, he knows what's going on. Flynn and I and Sydney said after about 20 minutes, this is the most surreal thing we've ever seen. The lawyers were shouting at the president. Clearly, the lawyers, can you still see me, sir? We seem to have frozen up. Hello? So th this is the White House attorneys, clearly not the team led by Rudy Giuliani. So you, Sydney well, Powell, Rudy, and General Rudy. Flynn... Right. No, I understand. These are, these are the attorneys, not the team led by Rudy Giuliani. This is the White House attorneys. You and Sidney Powell and, and, and General Flynn are, are there, and you want the president to go forward. And, and are they saying, no, you should not go forward, Mr. President? We have so many options. This is so winnable. This is absolutely winnable. And everything that's mentioned, these lawyers and, and, and Mr. Meadows, but especially these three lawyers are immediately saying no to. It's almost like they say no, and then they're going to converse about what the reason is. But they're in automatic no mode. Uh, it's a flat lie that martial law or anything about using the military was discussed in that meeting. The leaker who said that is lying through his teeth, which tells you something about him. Uh, they are absolutely in reflexive well, no mode. It came to shouting. It came to shouting between them and Flynn, who's the calmest guy in the world, till he finally stood up and said, let me ask you folks a question. Do you think the president won on November 3rd? Can we? And they all scuffed their toe in the dirt. Not one of them would answer that question. Uh, they shouted at president well, and me and Flynn and Sydney, they're shouting at the president till it literally got to the point that Flynn and I were standing shoulder to shoulder facing these nothing people led by Pat Cipollone. I would have fired that guy. If he worked for me, I would have fired him in a New York minute. I was shocked. Well, the Say reason him? I wanted to bring you on the program, Patrick, is because I wanted to get this straight from, from your mouth as someone that was in the room. There's so many stories flying around there. And I can tell you, we support you. We support the team that wants the president to fight on because all of us believe this has to be investigated and this has to be worked out for justice to prevail. Patrick Byrne, thank you for coming on the program. It is so great to see you again. You keep up the fight as well. I know it takes a lot of strength to do this, and we appreciate yours, sir. Thank you. It's so a the president's team outside the White House, the one led by Rudy Giuliani, legal team that is, still believes there is a path to victory. As I mentioned, there's another Supreme Court case that's been filed now, but along with the biggest obstacle has been to get law enforcement involved in all of this. The FBI, the Justice Department have been missing in action, which is why I'm flabbergasted that the Attorney General, Bill Barr, would declare this. We had looked at uh, suggestions or allegations of systemic or broad-based fraud that would affect the outcome of the election, and I already spoke to that, and I stand by that. Well, I mean, come on. How would you know that, Mr. Attorney General? It doesn't appear the Justice Department seized any of the voting machines. It doesn't appear they've interviewed any of the witnesses who claim to have witnessed or even taken part in the fraud firsthand. I believe it's Bill Barr's way of sticking it to the president on his way out the door. If you like your freedoms, please do your homework. Mainstream media is our enemy. Please follow and subscribe on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, or on most of your podcast platforms. I made it easy for each and every one of you. You can get all the links all in one place at lyricalspit.com. Until next time, this is Thayfala, the Butcher Debashi. Hate don't beat hate, but love has a chance. Hashtag Lyrical Spit. Hashtag save our children and Epstein didn't kill himself. This was a say something dynamite productions. Huh, huh, huh.
Help keep this show free by buying some of our swag of apparel at ButcherSpit.com. We have t-shirts, hoodies, and even baby onesies. That's ButcherSpit.com.